Welcome to Reading on Headlines, where I read the tarot on news headlines. This is the place where tarot meets progressive politics. I offer insights on the mess that is world, the world of politics and media. And I do interviews with tarot readers who share our passion for leftist ideals and social justice. One of these days, I will know that by head and I won't have to look at my second screen. On today's episode, we're covering kind of a, a lot of tougher topics, to be honest. Last week, I didn't want to talk about what was going on in the Middle East right now with Israel and um, Palestine. Uh, I hope I'm saying it correct. Um, I know the Dutch words, um, but the pronunciation in English is sometimes a little hard if I say it incorrectly. It's not out of disrespect, I promise. Um, it's just about not, not knowing. So I want to talk about that. And then also in Poland this weekend, they have uh, elections, if I'm understanding correctly. And we're going to look at the two competing parties in Poland both are right wing and they are the ones that are like mostly competing um and we're gonna look at the poland elections as well then we're gonna look at what happened in france this week um with a school knife attack and we're gonna end on usually i want the pop culture topic to be something a little bit more light-hearted for this week it's not this is about the eight passengers story that has been going on it's not a story it's um it's a really heartbreaking case i have been following this case since before it was a case um i have been listening to a lot of commentary on that um on the family for over a year now maybe even two years i'm not sure um so that is something that i feel very connected to in as in that it's so heartbreaking and that a lot of people have been keeping up with eight passengers and everything that basically they've been had been doing wrong already that everybody sort of saw coming but everybody was still heartbroken when it did happen so uh, i'm already i'm already getting goosebumps okay so this is reading on headlines so i'm going to pop up the first headline that i'm going to read on and this is uh israel announces six hour window for gazans fleeing south as troops gather near the border so there is a lot that happened in the last week between israel and uh, palestina but that is not everything that has happened anyway there have been years and years of war what has going on and what has been going on I've been following a lot of coverage by Hassan Piker, who has been very up to date with everything that has happened this week and all the years before that. So I'm still educating myself a lot about what is going on. And I definitely recommend anybody else who is listening to this um, and who wants to have a deeper understanding of what is going on to check out that coverage. Um, and I have to say that since the initial attack by Hamas on Israel. Um, at first, the cover, the media coverage was very one-sided, and I think we're seeing a bit more, not necessarily nuance, but we see a lot more what, what is happening on both sides. So here we see that Israel's uh, military has announced a six-hour window for Palestinians to flee south. Um, along very specified streets within Gaza as tens of thousands leave their homes um, following eva an evacuation order uh, ahead of a possible Isla Israeli ground assault. And the thing is, like worldwide Western countries have been encouraging almost or giving the okay, giving permission for Israel to attack back um, to defend themselves against what Hamas has done, which was incredibly heartbreaking. And but the thing is that now all the these attacks that are going to happen, 
they're also on civilians. They're not on Hamas. The the leaders and the ones that are really responsible are somewhere else. They are hiding and they are not the ones who are going to suffer from these attacks that are going to happen. <sighs> So what I wanted to re look at, I'm using um, one of my favorite decks. This is the Anna K Tarot deck. And um, I feel like this has a very neutral tone, but also can be quite gentle and, very, and, and emotional in its, um, in its readings. And I think that is uh, something that at least I am craving when it comes to coverage on this. And I am not a news... Um, I'm not a news podcast. Um, I cover politics and I cover news, but more of uh, in a way of how we can deeper uh, deeper understand it, I guess. Um, so what I want to know now is what can we expect to see happening here? Um, oh, of course, the first card drops. This deck is so dramatic. Yeah. We have the Magician, and the Magician is doing what you're good at it's um it is about communicating so the interesting thing here is that what i w wasn't expecting is um the communication part so magician corresponds with the planet of mercury which is the planet of communication and day-to-day -day travel so when we look at that like yeah the day-to-day -day, almost that it's going to get worse. Like the, the, um, uh, the thing is with tarot, it often validates what we're feeling, um, or what we're, what we're thinking, what we are expecting. Um, but I will say the magician isn't for me a negative card. For me, the magician is, um, some sort of hopeful where, we can see that the magician, if you're looking, uh, if you're watching the video version, you can watch that. I'm pretty sure on Spotify as well as on YouTube. But the magician here is using what he has available. He's using all of the elements to create something. So we can see this happening in a lot of ways. We can see this as both parties doing what they're good at or doing what they have been doing. Or we can see that I, I don't think. In this case, Israel is just out of the blue, gonna do something, gonna communicate, but maybe um, with some pressure from in in the West. There are, and we're gonna talk about that too, about the um, protests that have been happening, uh, pro-Palestinian protests. Um, maybe Israel is gonna get some um, some. How do I say? It? Not necessarily some force, but uh, some encouragement from the West to try and do something um, instead of to keep in being engaged in this war. I hope that that makes sense. What else can we expect to be happening here? Oh, this is so sad. The Five of Cups, a lot, a lot of emotional pain, a lot of breaking down of buildings, a lot of people having to leave behind possessions that they have emotional connections to. I think um, I, th I think maybe something else that we can see with the magician is content creation, is the, the creation of something. And the thing, what, what is the thing right now with the uh, war that is going on is that is different from what it has been is that right now people have phones and they can film everything that is going on. They're posting it online and we can see from all perspectives what is happening and the dread and the terror that is going on and the destruction and the sadness uh, and the hopelessness. And we can see all of that. And that is what th that is how we in the West are being affected by it as well, because we can see what is going on. I think a lot of, for a long time, people didn't really know what was going on in Palestine and Israel. A lot of people either didn't know or they um, sort of 
kept their their eye shutters off on you know uh, they were trying to ignore it because it wasn't really visible it wasn't really made visible the only way that I really found out about what was going on was because I followed some people on Instagram that talked about it like Kellyanne Maddox she had been very vocal on her Instagram of being pro Palestina and I didn't really understand what was going on but through watching her stories and the sources that she shared I learned a lot more and now that this has happened in the last week I have been reading even more so I think that because we can see all of the emotions all of the emotions of the Palestinian people and all of the destruction that has been going on because it's not just the last week that Palestinians have been sharing the dread and terror that they had been living through. It has been for years. Uh, Hassan shared uh, a couple of clips in one of his live streams that I was uh, watching live, and you can see the you can see basically the the destruction and everything that happened in the war. And we can we are able to feel much more emotionally connected to that and to the people and see that they are actual human beings and not just uh, human animals as has been talked about in the, in the press. And I think that, yes, it is horrible to see that, but I think that seeing that and seeing that emotion, seeing that destruction and that hopelessness, I think that is going to move a lot of people into taking action and potentially trying to do something about it yeah oh. it's a lot right it is a lot then we have the seven of rods um a lot of um fighting let me say a lot of fighting a lot of people trying to convince each other like you have people that are pro-israel and you have people that are pro-palestinians and there are people that just don't know. Um, and I think that a lot of people are having to defend their boundaries um, because what we're going to look at as well is the pro-Palestinian protests, which in France, we're going to look at a headline, has been banned. We're going to look at that. But being able to keep your opinion and to state your opinion and to stay strong with that opinion is going to be really hard, especially for those who are pro-Palestinians, um, because the West has very much been pro-Israel. Um, and yeah, that is, I think, what, um, what I'm seeing here. I'm trying to not stay too long on this topic because it is really draining. And I know a lot of you have already heard and seen and read a lot of content about this. Um, so what I want to look at right now is um, what can we as outsiders, because we are outsiders of this war, but we're also affected by this news. So how can we do something? How can we do something? And I think the first card that I pulled about this already was the Seven of Rods, where we um, have to stay strong with our opinions. Yes, you, you don't want to live in an echo chamber. You want to... Um, receive more information but it doesn't mean that the information that you receive or other things that you read or see is necessarily going to change the facts then these cards let me see pulling them on up uh, for the for the camera first before i even see them we have the two of cups and we have the moon so what we can do um, as outsiders is showing our support um, showing our support and our connection to it. That is what I see with the Two of Cups. The Two of Cups um, is about emotions and connections. So be keep being invested in this, even though it's really hard and it's really draining and it's okay to take a step back and to decompress from it all. But I still think that it's important to sh keep showing your support and... Because it matters, because it matters and it needs to be heard. And because of Kellyanne showing her support, I was able to learn about what was going on as well. And I know that I'm not the only one who has learned through um, someone else's Instagram stories and maybe me sharing 
things on my Instagram stories about this is going to help someone else understand it more. So I think showing support is really, really important. And then the thing with the moon is there's, it, it talks about things that are hidden. So there are so many things that we don't know that is going on behind the scenes, whether that is, um, I, I think that mostly talks about Israel, um, where there's so much going on that we don't know behind closed doors, um, maybe even in the West, um, conversations that are being held, we don't know. Um, I know that a lot of high politicians, um, both in the US, but also here in the Netherlands, have shown a lot of support for Israel. We don't know what conversations are being held uh, behind closed doors. Um, and I think that that is something that we have to keep in mind as well as that a lot of people just don't know what has happened these last years in Israel and um, Palestine. People ha ha didn't know. And now is, for some people, it's the first time that they're actually learning about what happened and they're learning about it by hearing that a terrorist organization attacked Israel. And that is going to shift their bias very heavily one way when there's so much more information to be heard, to be had uh, about all of this. And then before we go on to the next topic, I do want to um, talk about this. Um, France bans all pro-Palestinian protests. And I know that, I think the UK... I think they're protesting today, actually, right now. I remember Kellyanne <laughs> posting this on her um, on her stories. Hundreds of demonstrators gathered in central Paris on Thursday in defiance on, of a new controversial new uh, ban on pro-Palestinian rallies, like a ban on ra rallies or um, protests. Ha how is that democratic? Um, we're going to talk about France in another topic, um, but it's it's really scary. Um, the the French police work to disperse the crowds with tear gas and water cannons. The ban had been announced earlier in the day. Pro-Palestinian demonstrations must be prohibited because they are likely to generate disturbances to the public order. I mean, people are mad. People are mad about what is happening because it has been happening for a long time. And again, as we're going to talk about with friends, there's a lot, a lot of anti-Muslim um, rhetoric going on in France. And again, we're going to talk about that. But it makes sense that people in France are very angry or very mad um, because of the anti-Muslim rhetoric that has been going on there. Um, and then on top of that, you're telling people that they can't protest. Like, honestly, what do you think is going to happen? Honestly. <sighs> okay. Before we go on, I want to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, which is me. <laughs> and on October 19th, I am hosting the Confident Terror Reader Workshop, which is a live workshop in which I teach my two-step system to confidently and accurately read the tarot without having to rely on a guidebook. It's going to be an interactive workshop and you're going to read the cards during it. So bring your deck. Besides the workshop that will help you read the tarot and do meaningful and insightful readings for yourself and others, you will also get the deck buying guide to purchase your first tarot deck without getting overwhelmed with all of the options. You get worksheets so you can master the information in the workshop and actually put it into practice during, uh, during the workshop. And you also get a recording of the workshop so that you can re-watch it at any time. Go to tarotwithruby.com slash TCTR, which is short for the Confident Tarot Reader, or click the link in the show notes to book your spot for October 19th. I very much look forward to seeing you there. Okay, now we had a little bit of a lighter energy. We're going to get back into the... Not so light, the, the heavier energies, because what is going on in Poland is 
elections. And there are two main competing parties that we're going to take a look at. The first party is translated to um, law and justice. That is what the what it translates to. Pravo i spravidlivosk. I'm sorry. Um, but it's short for PIS, for PIS. So that's funny. Uh, it's a PIS is a right wing populist and national conservative political party in Poland. And what we're uh, seeing is that the, the interesting thing is that, yes, it is far right and it's populist. But we're, and, and it's also a um, very Christian democratic party. But we're also seeing that on some parts it's more left, um, which I think is is interesting. And we have some of those here in the Netherlands as well. So what we're seeing here is that um, PIS supports a state-guaranteed minimum social safety net, um, which I think is important, which I think is good. Um, it wants a reduction of taxes, um, which I think a lot of more conservative parties want. Um, PIS opposes cutting social welfare, welfare spending, also proposed the introduction of a system of state-guaranteed housing loans. And PIS supports uh, state-provided universal um, health care, which I think is important. But then when we go um, to some other parts here, diplomacy and defense, and I'm sharing all of this because I think it's important to get the, a little bit of the context here of what is going on in Poland, because not everybody um, knows what is going on abroad if you don't live in Poland. So here um, the party is in favor of strengthening the Polish army. Um, it is also Eurosceptic, but it isn't against being in the European Union. Um, and then when we what we see here with social policies uh, policies is that they are much more traditionalist than those um, of other social conservative parties in other countries. Um, and it very much reflects the views of the Christian right. And that is how PIS has been described to hold right-wing populist views. So it's very pro the family, encourages married couples to have more children, as if you can't just fucking decide that for yourself. Um, it's anti-abortion. Um, then, let's see, with disability rights, they wanted to reduce barriers for disabled people, which is really good. Um, then with gay rights, of course, it opposes LGBT rights. Um, it's against um, same-sex marriages, um, all of that. Was it a nationalist? I rem don't remember reading this party. Um, characterized as a partially nationalist party. Okay, so now we know a little bit about that party. Um, we're not going to talk about the other party as long because there's just there doesn't really seem to be as much information on there. Uh, but this is the civic platform, and this is a center right political party in Poland. And here, um, what did we see? I I thought this page was really weird because it says a lot of um, how how it's been described, but it doesn't really say it, like why. So what do we see here uh, mostly is that since um, like civic platform um, has gradually moved from its Christian democratic stances, um, and the they have been holding more liberal positions on social issues. Um, I have no idea what that means. Um, more funding of fertilization programs, um, which in vitro seems to be uh, studies. Um, they also support civil unions from same-sex couples, but they're also against same-sex marriage. And they're also against the adoption of children by same-sex couples. Um, the party also currently supports liberaliza liberalization of the abortion law which I'm not really sure what that means. And I've tried to look into this, um, but I'm not really sure what that means. Abortion in Poland is only legal in certain cases. 
right now, which is really, really sad. Um, and in response to the climate crisis, the Civic Platform has promised to end the use of coal for energy in Poland by 2040. So yeah, this is basically the biggest opposition party against the PIS party, the Law and Justice Party. It's just so funny to call it PIS. Uh, the PIS party. Um, and it has become more liberal as well as populist. So this is like a case of bad versus worse. And that is what is going on in Poland right now with the elections. So imagine living there. If there are any uh, Polish people watching, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. If you want to leave like a voice message, maybe even the aftermath of the elections, you want to leave a voice message, um, I can feature you on the show. Or if you don't want to be featured on the show, you don't have to be. Uh, but I would just love to love to hear. So what I want to know now is I want to get some energies for both of the parties. Let's start with piss. <laughs> Let's start with piss. <sighs> okay. So this is about st uh, stability. They have been um, like the main party, the leadership party, I guess, for eight years. And they are wanting to go for a third term. So that's basically what's going on here. So the stability is that they have a very stable as like the leading party, as the major party, the coalition, I guess. Uh, then we also have strength and the star. And the star is about hope and uh, peace of mind. And then the strength card is t sort of taming the beast. So I almost get this idea that they are not really worried. Um, they don't think they're going to lose. We're going to look into what we can expect for the election results. But when it comes to um, law and justice, when it comes to piss, um, they don't really seem to be very worried. They think they sort of have it in the bag because they think like, well, we've been ruling basically for eight years now. Um, we've been doing good and uh, people are going to vote for us again. So I think there's very that, um, um, what is that word? Laissez-faire? Laissez-faire? It's, fair. It's, it's French. It's like the not really caring approach um, to it. Which is really interesting. Um, now let's take a look at the civic platform. Civic platform. What can we see in the energy of civic platform? Ooh. We have the six of pentacles and the king of pentacles. I keep having to adjust the focus on this. I'm so sorry. The six of pentacles is about giving and taking. And they feel like at least the people who, ha who have been... Previously, maybe for the piss party, but they feel like they haven't really gotten anything out of it. Um, so they are like, I almost want to say pretending to be like right center right is still better than far right. Right. Um, but they're still opposing same sex marriages. I don't know if that is ever going to be okay in Poland. Um, which is really sad for my Polish LGBT friends out there. Um, I, I really feel for you. And then with the King of Pentacles, they are also like putting on this show, this this big, big man, I guess. I, I read something about Donald Tusk um, being the leader of the civil uh, platform. But they are also, they also think that they're big shit and they are doing are in this for the long haul so even if they don't get like the main coalition party and they um, are gonna be in the opposition again I think they're gonna be very loud and they're gonna they're gonna play big um, that is what I'm thinking here that they are big players here um, which if we are hearing about this election where those two parties are, sort of running against each other basically i'm pretty sure there would be other parties that you can vote for right like you can't just vote for center right and far right in poland uh, but these are like the main parties that have a chance at winning big i guess <sighs> feel for you guys let's take a look at 
I want to take a look at what we can expect for the election results. I'm not expecting anything good, to be really honest. We have the five of rods and we have the fool. So the fool's making me think that maybe civic platform could win where we have a new leader, a new beginning, um, but it's not going to be without a fight. Um, the five of rods, uh, ooh, I'm getting really dark. <laughs> I am missing the sun and my light that I usually have is also um, not working out of battery. So... The Five of Rods shows conflict and fighting and competition in some sort. Uh, but here we can see just two people like, um, knock, what is this called? Like knuckle, not knuckle fighting, but um, where they're trying to see who is the strongest. And again, I saw in both of these parties that they think like one has feels like they have nothing to lose, like they are definitely going to win again. And the other party seems to feel like they're big shit. So those energies against each other are going to lead to a lot, lot of conflicts. So that's interesting. Then lastly, for uh, my non-right wing uh, polls out there, as well as for the LGBT polls, I want... A message of support for you guys, because I cannot imagine to what it's like to be a leftist in Poland right now. Um, I can understand that it might feel very hopeless. I feel that way sometimes here in the Netherlands as well. And I know that the Netherlands is perceived as somewhat leftist, but um, it's not really. Um, I I'd love to do an episode on here about Dutch politics, also because our elections are in like a month. I definitely want to talk about that as well. A message of support. Oh, we have the Ace of Rods. Don't stop being yourself. We have the Ten of Pentacles, which is uh, about seeking comfort in the people around you. I have the Ten of Cups also. Uh, uh, okay, message of support. You got it here. Okay, we have the Ten of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles seeking um comfort with the people that you love and the people that do love and respect you um, don't stop being yourself don't stop being adventurous as we can see here with the ace of rods don't stop being adventurous don't stop being you um, but but also stay safe stay safe and I this definitely does feel like things will get better um, not necessarily in the short term but I do see see things getting better for the non-right wing and especially the LGBT people in Poland. So I'm sending you so much love. Um, again, if you want to send me a message on how you are dealing with all of this, maybe with the aftermath of the elections, um, I would love to hear it. You can absolutely send me a message on Instagram, voice message on Instagram or here on Spotify in the Q&A section. You can also leave a... Um, Sort of a voicemail, I guess. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, let's go to the next topic, which is France. Um, and them raising their security level after a school knife attack. Now, don't get me wrong. That's not good. A school knife attack. Uh, what had happened was that um, a guy, a 20-year-old, actually. I saw that somewhere. Yeah, the... A 20-year-old, he is a Russian national, Mohamed Mukokov, Mukokov, I guess, of Czech origin. Uh, he was already known to security services. He fatally stabbed a teacher. Now, I used to be a teacher, so th this shit is very scary. Um, witnesses say that the knife man shouted, Allah Akbar, uh, which means God is the greatest during an attack, the attack at a school in northern France. Now, what I want to talk about is not necessarily this specific attack. Um, here we see the attack emergency level has been used in previous counter-terror cases. But what I want to talk about is this bit here. Um, they talked about uh, that this attack comes nearly three years since the murder and beheading of another teacher outside his school in Paris. And the perpetrator of that attack was 18-year-olds. 
And it also says that France has been hit by a series of Islamist attacks in recent years. And the worst was in November 2015, when a gunmen and suicide bombers attacked entertainment venues and cafes in Paris, killing 130 people. And that attack was claimed by the IS, by the Islamic State group. And basically what I want to... What I wanted to know, and we see this again in the ban on pro-Palestinian protests, is this rhetoric of being anti-Muslim, of anti-Islam. Um, and on the other hand, also having a lot of Islamist attacks. Now, I don't know if these are Islamist attacks or they are attacks or horrible things done by people who happen to be Muslim, or if that is linked to all the anti-Muslim rhetoric going on. You know, it's like, I, I feel like this is a, a vicious cycle. So what I want to know is what is going on? Like, why are there so many of these attacks in France? And basically, is there anything that we can do? My God, the first thing that I pull, the first card that I pull, I should stop sharing my screen, is the wheel of fortune like i said a wheel the turning it keeps like one thing pops up and then something happens in return it's like this vicious cycle we have the king of rods which i think in this case is the leader um, i don't know much about the current leader in france i'm pretty sure it's macron I, but i think that um macron has a lot of influence in spewing the anti-Muslim rhetoric, in sharing all these anti-Muslim sentiments. And that makes people angry. There are a lot of Muslims in France. I, I know that there is a link to Morocco and France. So I don't know if it was a colony at once or they are... There are, is a connection, like Morocco is somehow related to France. It was a former colony, yes. And I know that a lot of Moroccans speak French as well. Um, I grew up with a lot of Moroccan and Turkish friends around me in my class. Um, and I know that some of them spoke fluent French, like even before we had French as a subject in school. Um, I was never able to master French. Uh, je ne parle pas français, I'm so sorry. Um, however, I think that that may have led to a lot of um, Muslim people living in France. I know that there are also a lot of Muslim people living in the Netherlands, and that is historically seen because after it's not necessarily after the second world war it was like a couple of decades after but we had a need for more workers so we got a lot of workers from turkey from morocco and they would work in the netherlands and they would do the jobs that the dutch people didn't want to do i am assuming that it's something similar in france um and then at one point People looked around and thought, oh, there are a lot of Moroccan and Turkish people living here. And suddenly they started not liking that, um, which I think is weird um, because the workers that were going were coming here brought their families, started families. Those children started their own families. So it's just natural. It's just normal if you think about it. Um, but that is my um, that's my opinion, I guess. Um but I think that Macron definitely has a hand in, not that these attacks are happening, but at least, like I said, in the anti-Muslim rhetoric that has been going on. Um, and in that case, we do see the these people that are constantly being taken down and being talked about negatively in the media and by politicians, by the, the leader of the country that they're living in. Um, and that leads them to feel so defensive. Um, I understand that. I'm not saying that the, the actions after that, that I condone those, I don't. But I get the feeling of defensiveness um, if, if you're constantly, your religion, which is so important to you, is constantly being ridiculed or constantly being talked about in a negative way. I understand the, the feeling of defensiveness. Um, in that regards, and I think that that is absolutely linked um, 
linked to to the attacks. And then we have the Four of Cups, the not being satisfied, which could go either way. It could go the way of the, I guess, the French people. I still think that Muslim people living in France, even though they may have at one point come from Morocco, still think that they are French as well. Um, but like the, the French Muslims, I guess, um, it could be them or the French non-Muslims, I guess, um, could be the ones that are dissatisfied. But it it is this cycle that is so hard to get out of because both sides are putting themselves up in a very defensive way. Um, it's the politicians that are being very defensive and being very anti-Islam. And then there are the Muslims who are who keep having to hear that. And some of them, definitely not all of them, but a f like a few um, are acting out in this way that is very harmful. And that I know a lot of people, a lot of Muslims, pretty much all of Muslims condemn because they don't agree. Um, because I'm pretty sure I, like I said, I grew up with a lot of Muslim friends. So I definitely heard a little bit about their interpretations of what it says in the Quran. Um, and they don't condone violence. <laughs> pretty sure they don't condone violence. Um, so it's just really sad. Yeah. Okay. On a little bit of a lighter note, I want to take a little social media minute where I look at my um, Instagram, whether that is on my personal Instagram where I share my um, episodes or my in my DMs, or on Spotify, um, the Spotify where you can leave listener uh, questions or voicemails. So for today. On the uh, post that I posted on uh, Tarot with Ruby, that's my handle on Instagram, I posted that a new episode was out, which was one of the previous ones, How Tarot Can Help Us Understand Politics. And Gemma, she's my friend, it's Gemma Black on Instagram, um, commented, so exciting. I love this for you. It's so unique too. Thank you so much, Gemma. I really appreciate it. Uh, I really like hearing that ideas that I have are good, that they're unique and that people are interested in this and that people are excited about this um, because I am excited about this. Like this shit is heavy, but I think it's important and still I get a lot of value out of it and I hope that you also get a lot of value out of it. Funny thing is that I thought that doing only a couple of topics would take me like 30 minutes max for an episode, but we're now at um, over 40 minutes and... Um, I still have one topic to do and I think it's an important topic so I don't want to um, want to skip it and it's about the eight passengers and eight passengers is the name of a YouTube channel that was like a family vlog channel and the parents names were Ruby Frankie which always feels a little, a little weird because my first name is Ruby um, but Ruby Frankie and her husband Kevin Frankie you can see them here on the picture um, I don't usually share Fox News articles but this was the only fairly recent one that I could find um, and they have a picture here luckily they have all the kids faces blurred but what basically happened here is Ruby and Kevin, mostly Ruby, posted vlogs. They shared a lot of things about the lives of the children. There were a lot of controversial um, and problematic parenting ways that she had. Um, she had one of her youngest daughters who was like four or five at the time, pretty sure she was in kindergarten, um, had her go hungry at her school because the kid herself forgot to pack her lunch even though she told her mother that that she did pack her lunch and ruby frankie was like well she'll learn from this you know if she has to go hungry to learn this lesson she'll have to go hungry um, which i'm pretty sure is child abuse but okay then uh, her oldest son who is now um, an adult um, and he had to sleep on a beanbag his bed was taken for seven months he had to sleep on a beanbag um 
pretty I, I don't really know what the exact reason was i think he played a prank on his little brother by saying that they were going to go to disney but they weren't going to go to disney um and that warranted the bed being taken away for seven months and at that point when the bed was at least given back after seven months he still didn't have a bedroom door um he was also sent to one of those camps teen problematic teen camps for whatever reason um so that is like a little bit of the background and that is everything that was made public okay they were talking about this shit in their vlogs and then um the vlogs sort of stopped and ruby frankie and kevin frankie appeared on a video or something like that of this um woman jody hildebrand who is a licensed therapist. I'm pretty sure she doesn't have her license anymore. Um, and it was evoked at some point, but this Jody Hildebrand, extremely problematic. And um, she did like couples therapy. So she had Kevin and Ruby in couples therapy together. And from there, uh, Jody and Ruby formed this connections, that was the name, connections therapy thing, which is very pro problematic if you think about it, that you start a company with your therapist like your relationship therapist like what the fuck is that like that is so weird anyway they would talk about all sorts of transphobic homophobic stuff um all like very pro family pro having kids and all that sort of stuff um ruby frankie um like okay i want to get to the point what uh, what happened because as you can see here police reports have been made um and what happened is that at the end of august i'm pretty sure at the very end of august there was there were only two the two littlest kids one boy one girl uh, were involved in this and they uh, the little boy escaped from Jody Hildebrand's house to a neighbor's house. And um, he looked very uh, malnourished. He looked very unwell. And the um, he had like, um, I don't know if it was residue of tapes, but he had tapes around his ankles or his uh, wrists, something like that. And a neighbor called 911 and the police retrieved the little girl from Jody Hildebrand's house. Ruby Frankie was not present at that moment, but it's very, um, it, it's very likely that she knew what was going on. So from there, there were a lot of... Um, people speaking out about what happened. Um, let's just read part of this together. Police reports made from Ruby Frankie's home address in Utah detail various troubles at the parent like at Ruby's home since 2020, three years before she and her business partner Jody Hildebrand were ar arrested on each six counts of child abuse. Um, and they are like not light. They are like the you, you, there are different degrees of which you can um, be arrested on account of child abuse, and it was like aggravated child abuse, which is uh, like not feeding them, um, all, all of that sort of stuff, torture. I'm pretty sure it was in there as well. Um, and Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrand ran a joint parenting advice YouTube channel called Connections Classroom, and they were charged. Um, after the police located two of Frankie's children um, who were malnourished and, and emaciated at Jody's home on August 30th. Yeah, so everything I just said by head definitely um, was true. The boy was only 12, year old, 12 years old. Um, and they there after this, there were so many stories about people who thought something was wrong. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. There were a lot of uh, people who had followed the Eight Passengers YouTube channel, who had followed um, Ruby Frankie and all of the commentary about that as well. I, I was one of those. I also followed a lot of the commentary. I didn't follow Eight Passengers themselves. I am not really one for to watch family vlogging, for family vlogs. And... Um, it was heartbreaking to see um, that something that a lot of people figured or 
thought or not necessarily assumed, but maybe were afraid what was going on, that it actually was that and maybe even worse. Um, and what I wanted to know um, is, first, I want to know a little bit about what we can expect to see happening in this case. And I want this to know, be about Ruby and Jody. I do not want to read about the kids. This is the intention that I'm setting with my tarot deck. I do not want to know about the kids. I want to know what we can expect happening in this case regarding Ruby and Jody. And I'm saying this because, yes, what matters most in this case is that the kids are safe. But I also don't think that it's uh, very ethical to read on children especially who have already had their pr privacy um like broken how, how can i say that like they have had no privacy because their mother decided to start a vlog channel and vlog their entire lives and showcase it to basically the entire world so to respect the children's privacy i just want to see and i have no respect for ruby and jody um <laughs> And they're public figures as well. They chose to be public figures. The children did not. Um, what can we expect to see happening in this case? Let's take a look. We have the King of Rods again. Then we have the Knight of Swords and the Eight of Rods. Like it went all, all went so quick here with the Eight of Rods momentum. Um, when things started falling into place um, and, and the news was being made, it was so quick. A lot of videos came out of it. And I think that is going to, first of all, ruin their reputation. I think it already has. Um, and I think it already had been ruined for um, a lot of people before this news even came out. Um, but it's the, the ball is just going to keep rolling. And um, more and more people are going to hear about this. And the interesting thing here is that what we see is they both seems to think that they did nothing wrong which in a child abuse case is so heartbreaking um that they are i i'm not someone who diagnoses people but um let's just say a lot of um narcissistic traits that um i'm i'm, I'm getting here a lot of narcissistic vibes um and they seem to think that they did nothing wrong but they also sort of can't help themselves just talking. I don't know how much they've talked since they were arrested, but I know that at the arrest of Jody Hildebrand, she yelled or said something along the lines of those children shouldn't be around other kids or something like that. No one should be around those kids. Something along those lines. Like they can't help themselves. They are so deep into their own shit that they just keep talking because they are so convinced that they did nothing wrong and that the children deserve this, which is, I have no words. I have no words. Um, I also want to know um, more, more, just more about what can we ex expect to see happening. Um, these are the last few cards and I'm going to call it a day. Okay. Um, queen of pentacles. Um, this I usually see as like a work life balance, which for, in the case of Ruby Frankie, her work life balance was so off. And I think that her work w were her vlogs. And I think that even with everything that is in the vlogs, everything that she put up willingly, voluntarily, um, I think there's going to be a lot of evidence in that. But they're also doing an investigation right now um, where they're going to get a lot of information. And what is going to happen is, uh -huh, uh -huh, look at this, this is rest, taking a break. I definitely think these two are going to get prison time. Um, I would be extremely heartbroken if neither of them or only one of them were to get, um, uh, were to get a prison time. I think they deserve it. I think they should get prison time. I think there's way too much evidence for them to um, be found not guilty. There's just so much evidence. And I think there's going to be some sort of a breakthrough here with the Ace of Swords. I think there's going to be some sort of a breakthrough in the investigation, in everything. Maybe someone can't shut their mouth and they're going to just say something that is going to seal the deal. Maybe it's going to be a specific witness. I know that um, 
Jody Hildebrand's niece, Jessie. They have spoken out about um, Jody Hildebrand. They've been on um, Mormon Stories podcast. I watched that interview and it was very heartbreaking what um, Jessie had to go through um, um, because of Jody Hildebrand. And it's very likely that the exact same thing that Jessie had to go to through uh, that these Ruby Frankie's kids also had to go through. So... I think there are going to be a lot of breakthroughs in this investigation. There's no way that they're going to be found not guilty. Okay, so the last little segment that I want to do before we close off is a community card pool. I did a community card pool last week as well. That one was a bit lighter about Taylor Swift. Um, but because that was one of my first episodes, it didn't get a lot of views yet. So I didn't get any entries for the community card pool, which is okay because we have another chance right now. And this one is... I want you to pull a card about what can we as a community or just you as a person, me as a person, as an individual do to cope with this heavy news. I'm not going to pull a card. I've pulled enough cards. You're going to pull a card now. You're going to grab your deck. And what can we as a community or you as a person, as an individual do to cope with heavy news? We talked about a lot of heavy news today. It's been a heavy news season, I guess. And um, yeah, if you want to let me know, you can share a picture and your interpretation on Instagram or you can leave it in the Q&A section on um, Spotify. You can also send me a voice message on uh, Instagram. Would love to hear from you. Don't forget to sign up for the Confidence Terror Reader Workshop. If you want to stop struggling to put the cards together in a reading, go to terrorwithruby.com. Again, I would love to hear your thoughts on this episode or your community card pool. You can share that with me on Instagram or in the Q&A section on Spotify underneath this episode. Thank you so much for listening. Stay sane, stay safe, and do some self-care today.